Welcome back guys, Jimmy Jules 153 here with another episode of Short Circuits. Today we'll be learning how to do a simple character select for a one player game. To start off with, we've just got our three characters here, and all we've done to these is just totally strip them down just so that they're a bear puppet. All we've kept are the sound effects and the auto guide, but you don't even really need these. The reason that we've done this is because we're not going to be playing these characters, these are just technically models. The character number that we choose will then be transferred over to the next scene, where it will spawn a playable version of this character. So first of all, we're going to want to grab out a microchip, just as we always do, to keep things nice and tidy. And on this microchip, we're going to want something that's going to be able to cycle through our characters, and only have one of them active at a time. And for this, a selector is absolutely perfect. This will let our player cycle through each of the characters one by one, and select one that they like. To let the player control this, we'll need its controller sensor. We'll put that down and just remove the depossess and all the other options that are there by default. And we'll change this to force possession so that the player is forced to possess this controller sensor. We'll use both the sticks and the d-pad to allow the player to cycle through these characters. So we'll grab the left stick local output, which is not affected by the camera position as opposed to the left stick output on the second page, which is affected by the camera position. We don't really need that, so we're just going to use the left stick local. We're going to need a splitter to split apart this fat wire and get the separate left, right and up and down signals. And we're only going to want the left and right signals for this, so we'll just plug that into another splitter to get the positive and the negative signal, which is right and left. So when the player pushes right, we want them to cycle through to the next output, and when they push left, we want it to cycle back to the previous output. And that's enough to control our selector. We also want them to be able to use the D-pad, so we'll go to the third page again, and we'll grab the left button, and plug that into the previous output, and we'll grab the right button, and plug that into the next. So now the player can use either the D-pad, or the left stick to cycle through the characters. We're also going to need a gadget to store our character number for the next scene. To transfer data between scenes you need a variable, so we'll grab out one of those, and we'll make this persist in dream so it will carry across between scenes, and we'll just call this character. And that will just hold our character number put that down there. That doesn't need to be attached to anything, this is a wireless gadget. Next we're going to need to actually set the variable to a specific character number when the player selects a character. So we'll grab out a variable modifier, and for character number 1 we'll make that Frederick the Fox. So we'll grab the tweak menu of the puppet here, and plug the output from port A into the puppet's power, so that this puppet is only powered when the selector is on port A. Because we're going to make this character number 1, we also want to set the variable to a 1 when the player has selected that character. So we'll change the... oops. So we'll change the variable modifier to change the character variable, and we want to set this to a value of 1. And we're also going to plug the selectors A output into that variable modifier. So whenever this variable modifier turns on, it's going to set the variable of character to number 1. Now I'll just quickly hook up the other characters here, and we'll see how this is going to work. I'll just grab C, we'll make player 3. Let's run over here. Just for testing purposes, I'm just going to make this remote controlled so that we don't have to go into play mode to do any of this. And if I hit play here, I should be able to push right on the stick, and it'll cycle through, just like we'd expect, and then we can push left and it goes backwards, and on the d-pad it does the same thing as well. Which is great. You can also see that the character variable has been changed to 1, 
because we've got this variable modifier changing it every time it gets activated with the A port. So now we'll set up the character two and three variables. three, make that one two, we'll plug port B into the variable modifier to set it to two, and we'll plug port C into the variable modifier to set the character to three. So now as we cycle through them it will set the character variable to a one, a two, or a three. Not too bad so far. But it looks a bit strange with the characters bouncing around the screen like that, so what we'll want to do is pile them all on top of each other so that it looks like each character is replacing the last. We'll turn on preview invisibility here, and we can see our puppets a bit better now. We'll just move them all into the middle of this grass patch. Just like so. Perfect. All right. Then we'll turn preview and visibility back on. And there we have it. Got our little character selecting and able to cycle through the characters, which is great. And that also sets the character variable. But we now, of course, need a way to go to the next scene and select this character. For that, the logical button is going to be the X button. So we'll grab the X output from the controller sensor here. And we'll plug this into a doorway because we want to exit when the player selects the character and head into the next scene. We'll grab out our doorway gadget, make sure that's set to an exit, which it is. And we'll plug our X button into that doorway. So now whenever we hit the X button, it's going to trigger this doorway and our character number will have been set from this selector here. So if I rewind time and hit play, I'm on character number one, two, three, and if I go back to two and hit the X button, it's going to trigger that doorway and send us on our way to the next dream. We'll rename this doorway so that it's nice and easy to differentiate what it is when we get into the dream editing. Uh, we'll just call it exit. And that is all we need to do for the starting scene of our character select. Alrighty guys, we're in our next scene now where we'll actually be spawning a playable version of our characters. You can see we've got the three characters here and these ones have all of their logic on them. Oh, this one's built upside down. But yeah, these are actually playable characters. So, we'll close a lot off. We need to basically spawn one of these characters depending on what the character variable has been set to in the previous scene. So again, we'll grab out our microchip. It's from the menu here. Plunk that in the scene. Now initially we're going to want to grab a copy of that variable that we made in the first scene. So we'll make an exact copy of that with the same settings. We'll call that character. And we're going to need to differentiate from when this is set to a number one, a number two, or a number three. So to differentiate that, we'll use a calculator because the calculator will know what the value is and can compare it to another number. And we'll use the current value output from that variable and we'll plug it into the operand one of the calculator. We'll use the equals here because we're checking whether the variable is equal to a one, a two, or a three. So initially we want to check whether it's equal to 1. So I'll change that to a 1 just like that. And if it is a 1, we want to omit a copy of this character. So we'll grab out an emitter here. And if the value is equal to 1, then we will omit. And we're going to omit change that down to zero, the emit speed, we don't need any emit speed. We'll emit character one as Frederick the Fox, because that was character one in our previous scene. We'll want to change the emit location to wherever we'd like the player to start in the scene, so let's say we would like them to start there, that's fine. And then we just want to change this to once as well, so that it only emits one of the characters. 
that's basically all we need to do to get the character to spawn in this scene. So now we'll just quickly duplicate this for the other two characters. So this one to a two. And this one to a three. So this is saying if the character number is equal to two or three, and we'll just use that same output from the first setup that we have. And we're going to use another emitter for each of these characters as well. All we're going to change is the character that gets emitted. So the character number two is this one here. And then character number three was little Sackbot. He's a little bit shorter than the rest, so I'll just move him down a bit so he's not so far off the floor when he spawns. Easy as that. We'll do the same thing and plug these calculators into these emitters here. I've got that fleck in the way. So now as soon as the scene starts, one of these calculators is going to activate and emit one of the characters. You'll also want to make sure that you have Force Possess turned on for your puppets because you don't want the player to have to manually possess the puppet when they enter the scene. To do this, you just jump into the puppet's logic and go into the controller logic chip, open up the tweak menu for the controller sensor and head to the important properties page. Then two thirds of the way down, you have the force possession option. We can test this by setting the initial value on the variable to one of our character numbers. Whoops. So if we set that to a one and hit play, it spawns a Frederick the Fox. And then if we actually jump into play mode, we'll automatically possess Frederick the Fox and be able to run around with him. If we change this to a three, rewind and play again, jump into play mode, you can see we're now Sackbot. Pretty cool. Now, one thing to note is that we're not going to use two of these three characters. So it would be great if we could get some thermometer back and maybe even some frames per second if we got rid of these when we're not using them. For this, we can use a not gate to say if the character has not been selected, then get rid of the character model. Just plug each of these calculators into its own not gate here. And we'll also need a destroyer to destroy the character. Plug each of these knock gates into its own destroyer. Just like so. Now you can see two of these have been activated because two of these characters haven't been selected and they can be destroyed. I'll just turn the studio lighting on here so we can see everything a bit easier. So if character number one is not selected, we can destroy character number one. So I'm just going to grab the affected object output from the destroyer here and plug that into character one. I'm just going to repeat this process for characters two and three so that if they are not selected, they too will be destroyed. Now, if we press play again, you can see that it emits a sackbot, keeps the sackbot model, but destroys the other two characters. I did forget to mention before too guys, just make sure you set this uh, character variable to persist in dream, just like the other one as well. And that is the setup that we need to have for our second scene. Now that we have both of our setups ready to go, we can import them both into their own dream. I'll exit this and save it. And we'll go into start fresh over here. And on the very right, we've got the dreams option. And we're just going to search for both of those character select screens and drag them in. You can see here that because we put a doorway on our first scene, it's got an exit also on this stream. We also renamed that doorway exit, and that's what appears on the dream bubble. So we can select this exit doorway and we got a bit of a wire coming out of it 
and we can plug this into entrances for the other scenes. So now we'll go from the start of the dream into this scene, we'll set our player number, and then jump into this scene, where our player number will be red, and the correct player will be omitted. Now that we've put those two scenes in here, I'll exit and save. Now that we've made our dream, we can go into play mode, select our character, let's select the sackbot this time, hit X, that will activate the doorway, and then the sackbot will respawn in the next dream. And that's really all there is to it guys. I used a setup really similar to this for my multiplayer game Creator Clash. The character select screen lets you cycle through multiple characters and shows you their names. And this is all done with a selector of course. The only thing I've done differently here is that I'm emitting the characters on top of the podiums rather than having them turn on. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.